hello and welcome to this week's vlog i am coming to you right from nyanga right now we are at the world's view please show them the view um And um, in this video, we are going to talk about Nyanga as a destination. We're going to talk about what can you do in Nyanga. We're going to talk about how much does it cost you and where can you stay. Uh, and I would recommend where I was staying. So definitely it's going to be a vlog or an informational video uh, as I promised. <music> So as you've heard from the beautiful, beautiful intro, <laughs> we're going to discuss younger um, travel tips and you know all of that jazz. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a new subscriber, welcome, welcome. I'm saying new subscriber because I'm hoping if you're enjoying this content, you're going to subscribe. If you're a returning viewer, you know the deal. I am thankful for you. I'm so happy you're here. Please like, share, and interact with my content because I'm trying to do this um, informational YouTuber thing. So for it to work, I'm counting on your views. I'm counting on you guys sharing my content and bringing all the tribes here. So I'm going to do this in uh, one video where I'm going to cover uh, what the vibe is, uh, what where you can stay. Uh, what to do and what to carry first things first Nyanga is where you go to relax it's where you go when you want to escape real life here in uh in in, in Harare it's where you go to just rest and you know um just rejuvenate and enjoy the trees the views the drives and all the other activities that are there to do um i wanted to just make sure that that is clear here anyanga is not a destination where you go to party i don't i don't see how that will happen but you you know what if you're the right company you can party anywhere but i think Nyanga is where you go to just relax taking everything the serenity and all that so we were in Nyanga for two nights and I'm just going to take you through what we managed to do and what we got up to in those two nights. And I hope that this information is important for you or useful for you as you plan your next trip. So in terms of distance, Nyanga is 278 or 280 kilometers from Harare. So what that means is um, you will have to factor in three to four hours of driving for us we took about five hours still trying to reconcile in my mind how that happened but yeah you have to factor in three to four hours of driving to nyanga there are no known flights unless you have a jet you can or if you can charter something you know never say never but i don't think there are public flights i've not heard of an uh, uh, an airport or an aerodrome in Nyanga I haven't but probably they're there maybe when I have a helicopter I'll hear about them but so far I don't know any in terms of the terrain I would advise going to Nyanga in the afternoon or starting in the morning the reason being that the road has so many caves so that means two things if you don't know the road you have too many caves coming up you know that you don't know if i think that is why there are so many accidents in nyanga that's number one then number two the road is too beautiful for you to do it at night you need to do it during the afternoon when you can see things i'll put through a clip here of just us driving within the national park it's gorgeous so you need to take in the views so that is that about nyanga then also in terms of the type of roads unless you want to go to if you want to go to mtarazi um and also the the pool you will need a high clearance vehicle and i have that quite the plug for you if you want to hire a car please go to nuclear sky and tell them i referred you so they have beautiful cars well serviced i've never had problems with them and the owner is quite very much a nice person so if you need an off-roader or an off-road car please go to nucleus and tell them i referred you the next category is where to stay in nyanga um so i've been to nyanga three times and most of the times not three times actually maybe four but whenever i went to nyanga on a program that was not work sponsored i stayed in self-catering lodges but when i was sponsored i think i stayed at trotberg and i also stayed at montclair um they're beautiful hotels 
um i wouldn't say there's really anything special about them as hotels i mean they are hotels they are beautiful hotels but when i have gone there with my friends we've always gone for the self-catering option and last time we stayed at this other place that we found through um, is it do africa do africa yeah it had um they had a plan they had a house that they were offering up for occupation and that's where we stayed but the most recent time we went there we stayed at the blue swallows lodges the blue solo lodges um operated by african sun so they are right next to the trotbeck uh hotel so if you're staying in the blue swallows you have access to everything that is a trotbeck whether it's the pool whether it's anything that you need from the hotel itself you have access to it and they are right next to it they're like within the same vicinity and that's where we stay the blue swallows are gorgeous 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 look at this I think unfortunately I could not take videos of the inside because we got there at night on Friday night and then we also got there um the following day the morning the house was messy I didn't want to do a video and then when we got back from activities it was late and I was tired so I don't have any footage but there are three bedrooms one of the bedroom is like upstairs it's kind of open it's probably like for kids not really like for a person who wants privacy or like your single friends can use that one and then there's a master bedroom and there's the second bedroom and all of them have um and there's a master bedroom and then there's a, uh, a second bedroom and there are two bathrooms the master bedroom has an in-suite the second bath the the the, the then the second bath bathroom is just there then the place has a fireplace you get also um the firewood for you to use as a in the fireplace and also there's a bry outside then on top of that the blankets are heated which is a plus if you know younger you know that as the sun goes down it says to get to get cold it gets cold so the temperatures are a bit low in the mornings and in the evenings so the fireplace is good um and the blankets being heated are also good we also found to be very useful the kitchen was clean there was everything that we needed like in the kitchen like the utensils and also to cook there's a fridge a gas stove um or what else was there and then also as part of the package you also get to have your own cleaner you have a cleaner who comes to clean every day every morning they come to clean and the total cost for two nights was 340 which makes it about 170 dollars per night for three bedrooms divide that by six i think it's quite reasonable given you're in younger and you also get amazing amazing views from the outside so all of the 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 units have a direct view into the dam or into the look into the water body that they have over there so you have direct access to the view and it's refreshing every morning my friends were obsessed with that view uh, i would wake up and see when i told you pants apart phone you know uh over there taking in the views getting supplies and things like fuel so fortunately for us we never needed any supplies but there is uh, except for fuel of course uh there is a grocery store or like a shopping center ish where there is a fuel station and that is like close to where montclair is there is a fuel station and there are like shops where you can buy things that you can't really pick from Harare. Things like your eyes, things like um, water maybe. Uh, but one of my friends is so obsessed with drinking the tap water said it's coming from Gairezi River. It's perfect. But well, you can buy water there. Um, what else? Yeah, that's where you can get like the supplies on the Montclair side. But then the Trotbeck is is a, quite a distance from the like short bike is quite a distance from there uh, probably 15 to 20 k's i don't know I, i'm not a distance person but you get it but i would advise that don't buy meat there even buy your supplies everything you need from harare if you can't bring it from harare buy it in Risape. then you won't have any problems you have time to enjoy everything there however there's a place that sells apples by the as as you're exiting the park that's you should buy a post there please do that put that on your bucket list then we're going to move into activities so the number one activity that i 
there are quite a couple of activities that have to do with nature most of them are like enjoying nature taking in the views as we've already said so the first one of the most expensive activities would be the skywalk and the sky and the zip line the skyline so the skyline is like where you take about a minute and a half or two minutes on a zip line from the other end it's 400 meters long it's <sighs> adrenaline inducing my friends enjoyed it i'll put in a video here of the skyline so for the skyline it's eight dollars per person for that experience and for the second thing that also happens there right there at mutarazi would be the skywalk so it's where you're walking i don't know how long that thing is the skywalk but yes you can do the skywalk the skywalk is 40 dollars per person and that's what i did you can also see this video right here it's adrenaline inducing, but it's not crazy you also have to take into account that when you're for you to do these activities there's like a whole hike to get to these places guys i was exercising over there and then they were showing me how unfit i am so those are the cost of the um, terrace skywalk and the skyline but on top of that you would have needed to pay the parks fees now the second activity that i loved totally was the froggy farm so at froggy farm you get access to like they have nice pizzas they even have burgers as well if you want um and all this like fancy food whatever and they have coffees they have drinks but we didn't have any drinks there we were drinking woolly waters <laughs> So what we ended up doing at Froggy Farm was this lunch and also just enjoying. We got to go on the swings. Uh, my friend got to go on the, uh, what do you call this? The trampoline. And then we also got to take in the views and to take very nice pictures. And we also met friends there. We met people over there that were there. To, that were actually residents of Nyang. And they're just telling us things, you know, and history and all that. So it was really good. And also there are very nice gems that are sold at Froggy Farm. So you can just take those for your house. Because where else will you get chocolate jam or berry jam or something like that? They are very nice things over there at Froggy Farm. So on your next stop in Nyanga, make sure that you go to the Froggy Farm. The other thing that we did, it was just activity field. The other thing that we did was to go to the to the Nyangome Falls. Nyangome Falls is gorgeous. It's it's, it's um it it gives Vic Falls vibes. Uh, you know Vic Bow Vic Falls like little Nyana. So before when I went to this falls. When I went to this falls in 2020 with my cousins, we actually got to go into the water and, you know, enjoy it. However, I don't know, is it because there is so much traffic now or whatever it is, the road, actual road leading to the falls is so bad. I wanted to take the Minister of Transport to say, guys, and the Minister of Tourism to say, guys, this is such a key feature of Nyanga. Can we do something about it? The road is bad. Whether it's the drive or the walk from where you leave your car to go into the falls, it's not nice. But and also inside, like close to the water, it's not slippery. So we did not even get to get into the water. Except for this boy. Who got there and was being baptized. This boy does not fear water. Mm, I do see this picture. I was even wearing a jacket because it was cold and it was slippery over there. But we didn't get to then get into the force, but you can just go see there, sit and take it all in. So that was it for our first day. Then we had our way to go to the township. We went to the township, we bought meat, and then we went and we had a bright home, watched soccer, played uh, games while we were right there by the fireside. I'll put in pictures here. It is so gorgeous, guys. Like the, <laughs> the blue solos are so gorgeous. Right, then this takes us to the second day. We decided to capitalize on the hotel's activities. So the hotel offers horse riding if you have like, if you're under 90 kgs, I think. So it offers horse riding. It also offers canoeing. Um, they also offer fishing, but we did not have any fishing roads, so we couldn't do fishing. So we ended up just doing canoeing. So the canoes sit two or three people. So we were five. 
other three being in that thing and then they were exploring like they went up the the derm you know but it was nice for them so i'll put in here like a video of us doing canoeing or going to the canoes for you to see the views and then for you to see us doing the canoeing it was gorgeous it was calming it was good for a low day because we had spent so much energy on saturday so on the day that you are not too busy with activities it's a good start then after that we checked out of the hotel then we went for our second set of activities our first stop was the world's view so the world's view is quite close to trot back so you can easily just you know go over there so we just went to the world's view so over there there is like a viewing point that shows you like in a straight line how far is victoria falls how far is harare how far is botswana how far is this they also have like different viewing points like this one so the main one is this where is this one where you go in the um, i don't know what it's called the structure that's built for you to see and then the next one is also somewhere where they said you can take uh you can have a picnic there and then also you can then see it and then there's a, a house that has like the history of nyanga how it came about it was one person who decided to do all this the like, guys it's just so amazing like sometimes i think uh, is our generation there like do we have that drive that these people had like somebody had to take five thousand pine trees to create a younger of course they were capitalizing on the already existing um uh, what do you call it, natural conditions but like just thinking having that much vision to say this is what i want to do like trot bag seeing a person saying this place looks like somewhere where trot would do well and then you you just have plans to bring the trolls like it's just amazing to build the dams to build the water bodies it is just amazing how some people can just see things and imagine something else and just run with that anyway for us to get into the world's view is two dollars per person uh and the card the copy anything i don't i don't quite remember but it was actually a nice place to just take everything in especially on a slow day so from the world's view we then went to park shed for lunch so this is what i call the vic for the youngest version of the lookout cafe please look out for the victory of Falls video because it's definitely coming your way um so this is in youngest version of the lookout cafe and it's gorgeous if i do say so myself it's gorgeous Mwah. uh and it's um it's a bit let me know it's a bit not your traditional restaurant fancy restaurants it's a bit younger it's a bit young yeah it's a bit younger they have like my plates a c and b to my two pot to a c and b uh and the meat was moist oh well, also i found there a strawberry cider can you believe it so this is the place and then you have gorgeous views of the forest or what is it called the jungle or whatever it is i was actually just thinking can someone just put here um a, a, a zip line and people just slide over you know and go there anyway that was it we then after that oh and they have a loo with the view <laughs> a lot of improvement has to happen there but i thought it was quite interesting i think it was quite um i think it was quite um creative then after that we then went to you guess right the sleep the natural pool so the natural pool is basically a body of water where uh it's like a mini waterfall there's a bridge on top of it and it's a mini waterfall and then there's um a pool downstairs like uh the basin where the water is flowing into and um there is a, actually a rock that says don't that i think meant don't go beyond this place because it's uh probably deep i tried to get into the water as you can see do i still have that video i tried to get into the water it was cold like legit cold it was i'm not even joking to get into the natural pool you just need to pay the parks uh the parks fees then other activities that are there in younger as i said there's fishing if you want fishing there's also um canoeing we did canoeing there's also um boat cruises if you want to do boat cruises on the day but the day is so small i don't think the boat cruise will be any fun and then there's also like quad bikes 
if you want to do quad bikes and there are still a lot of other places that i haven't seen that i hope to see next time i'm in nyanga so basically on the activities that's about it just some good tips number one if you're going to explore all these places you're going to need a high clearance vehicle because the roads the roads the roads will do the thing so you need a high clearance vehicle you need high um a very good company because those will kind of be your people that you'll be stuck with for the entire journey so everyone over there is doing their vacation thing you get what i'm saying so you need to bring your own good people number three which is a good saving tip go in the morning go to the net to this place it's close to where you turn into mutarizing buy a ticket to get access to the park and use that to go into all the places that i talked about the falls the pool um Taraz also requires that clearance uh everything that's within within the national park because there are other places to see especially the side where there's the pool there are other places to see i've forgotten the names but there are other places and other little things that you can do there so use that ticket was that five dollar ticket per person you can pay this through rtgs as well that five dollars per person will just cover you for all the activities that have to do with nature and then um the other things that you need to bring is just to be a person who is curious and who likes to spend their time chasing waterfalls because if you want like chasing waterfalls you will enjoy nyanga as a destination i hope that was useful for you and yours as you plan your next nyanga trip for fuel we ended up using about 140 plus 40 plus 50 about 13. the total cost for five people ended up becoming something that was equivalent to about 250 per person because it got to 250 because of the 80 dollars at um Tarazi. otherwise thank you so much for stopping by next week we are covering the great vumba because nyanga is very close to vumba so we are going to cover vumba before coming and looking the other way so thank you so much for stopping by don't forget to subscribe like share content this month is travel month so yeah let's hope you enjoy and get something useful from this bye i'll see you in the next video